Now, the statement from the CBN highlights that the Nigerian banking sector is not only one of the most highly regulated, but also an integral part of the nation's economic framework. It further explained that the CBN's risk-based approach to supervision allows it to focus on its regulatory effort on institutions that may pose the highest risk to the financial system. And while acknowledging that there may be grievances about the operations of certain banks, the CIBN and the bank CEOs urge individuals to channel such concerns through the appropriate regulatory authorities. These agencies include the CBN and the SEC, and they are well equipped to handle any complaint professionally and impartially. Now, public affairs analyst Mustafa Ewinla joins me now for more conversation on this. Good morning to you. Good morning, Thank you, All right. Uh, the, since last week, for a while now, the banking sector, the financial services sector, have been, you know, in the news for, you know, not so many good reasons. Specifically, uh, one of the top tier banks has, you know, been in the news. But let's take it from the angle of the CBN, and it's saying that. Um, all its banks uh, or all depositors' funds are actually secure, and uh, no bank or or banks um, have issues right now. Now I'm, I'm asking this because over time the CBN has come out, you know, f you know, with statement like that, and then um, uh, so days later we saw the opposite happening in in line with what happened with um, the banks that were liquidated not so long ago. So, yeah. should uh, the CBN statement be anything to you know, to go by? All right, so uh, essentially we've seen that uh, a lot has been happening within our financial sector in the past couple of months. Mm. And uh, if CBN is coming out to say that uh, the Nigerian people do not have any reason to be worried, mm. to be worried but or scared deposits. about anything. So I think that, uh, I mean, CBN, yes, they can say that, but of course all of us have seen what has played out in the past few months with the mm. last bank that was liquidated uh, just a few months ago. Because I personally know people who were affected with that uh, with that scenario, and they are still trying to get their so, funds. Their funds. So usually, usually we've seen that the financial sector is a very interesting space, and and yeah, we're talking about people's money. Mm. But naturally, uh, we're happy for institutions like the NDIC. Yes. Uh, that's the Nigeria the Deposit Insurance, Insurance Corporation. Yes. That was you know uh, essentially you know promulgated just to have. A regulatory body to see how people, you know, when, in yeah, a case where CBN oh. confiscates or you know revokes licenses from financial institutions, the NDIC is usually there to, I mean, and they are backed by the NDIC Act of uh, six, no, Act Number Sixteen of two thousand and six, oh. to say that okay, so just to create a safety net for depositors to make sure that everybody oh. gets their money back. So yes, so but essentially, I think that where 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 we are in Nigeria today as a country. I think we, should, we can do better than this. Mm. What has happened last week and even still happening as we speak mm. with some financial institutions not able to provide services. We've seen cases where, uh, you know, even mobile hubs were shut down. We've seen cases where mm. people cannot even assess their fund. True. We've seen cases where people had to start rushing to the bank last week, mm. you know, with the fate of withdrawing all their, all their deposits mm. because we never know what will happen in the next couple of days. So. So you cannot really blame people because these are people's money. So, but I, I think that again, we should have gotten to a stage whereby if you want to ask, do transactions, you should do it seamlessly, effortlessly, without any hiccups. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you, I just wonder the type of technology our banking industry mm -hmm. or our financial institutions use. We've been to other countries, we've seen how very effective their you know, financial institutions are from the mobile hubs to, to transactions conducted seamlessly. But over over every other time, last week we know I know businesses that were practically shut down because they could not transact. Yes, people would go to market with the aim of buying goods and services. They could not make payments. Mm. So people lost millions of money last week. People lost money. True. So, and so who caters for all that loss? Because your money is in the bank, you want to buy goods and services, you cannot pay. Yeah. So in that scenario, so I think our financial institutions can also do better. So when you see cases of people coming on social media to call them out, yes, that might not be the way to go. But I mean, social media, so whether we like it or not, has become a very useful tool for people to voice out their anger. Yeah. Because if you really want to start going through the process of 
suing banks because they are not giving you service. Because if you put your money in bank, mm -hmm. the right thing to do when you want to assess it is to assess it without any ECOPS, without any delay. Okay, okay. So, Before we move further, uh, yes, let's uh, uh, talk um, further on what you had just mentioned, what happened in the past week as people not being able to access their funds. Your phone, you know, yeah. Uh, specifically, some banks, you know, had issues, and um, it were, they were even in the news, and they said they were having upgrades, and the upgrades uh, were supposed to take um, a few hours, and then it escalated, like all through the weekend. So, so where does the uh, maybe FCCPC, the Consumer Protection um, Arm of the Federal Government, where where do they come in all of this, and where does the CBM, you know, also come in terms of? Um, banks giving the right information and carrying their customers along not just uh, giving out just one over bloated statement of um doing yeah. some upgrade at the end of the day people lose funds and then people even go for to restaurant and they're being held because they cannot because they cannot pay for bills for mm. services rendered so i think that so excuse me so i think that again it is not so well to come out and say that because you are doing a system upgrade people must suffer mm. You understand what I'm saying? Nigeria is not the only country that we have banks. Banks in, in international countries too, in foreign yeah. countries, do upgrade their, their systems every other time. Yeah. But they do not have to do it at the expense of the customers. Yeah. You, so there's a way that, I mean, technology has really advanced. So I think that the kind of technologies that our financial institutions use are not up to standard. That's why every time that they have to do a system upgrade, there's going to be a downtime. No. We've been to other parts of the country. We've seen how effective things are. So, again, so, so my, my, but my biggest plight is when you do this system upgrade and customers start to suffer, businesses start to suffer, how do you pay, how do you, comp uh, you know, compensate these customers yeah. for the loss, for the loss, I mean, for the loss that was incurred during that system upgrade? So, I think that we should also, we, have, we, should, we should take the cue from countries who have a very effective banking system where whether they are doing upgrades or not and this also happens during mm. at the end of every month if you have noticed you will see that sometimes some banks at the last day of every month there's always issue doing transfers but it is only this country i see this kind of stuff going on it doesn't happen in other countries so i think that the cbn now needs to come come in to say that banks should have to upgrade you know you know the kind of technologies that they use mm. we've seen how banks in this country some some banks in this country will be you know installing installing we used, used ATM machines at, at a terminal point. Mm. You go to the ATM machine, the ATM machine swallows your card. Nobody's responsible for that. You cannot withdraw at the time mm. you want. So I, I just think that our, our financial institutions need to do better, to be honest. Okay. And, and, and that, oh, that, works like, that work lies on the CBN because mm. the CBN is the one regulating commercial banks. Mm. And even, even the mobile money operators too. A lot of time you want to do just to withdraw from the POS vendors. Mm. They debit your money and they tell you to go to the bank. About to be in a restaurant sometime in the Lekki, and I, after finish eating, I could just to make payment. I was debited twice. It wasn't my fault. It was the bank. It was from the banks and all that, from the interbank and the POS vendors and all that. But I had to wait for almost a week or two before I got my refund. I had to call a friend to rescue me to get out of that restaurant. So these are issues. Yeah. So it's not it's not only Nigeria that they use POS terminals. It's yeah. not only Nigeria we have banks. So how are other countries that have a effective banking system? How are they able to do it such that? You will never so in in a country like Nigeria where you go to a POA, an, an ATM machine, the ATM machine is not dispensing. Mm. No message is displayed on the machine to tell you that the machine is on, mm. showing green light as mm. if it's dispensing. Mm. You put in your ATM machine, your, your card, and it debits you. Sometimes it even swallows your card. In advanced countries, in a country like UK, when you if a machine does not have cash, it tells you there is no cash. Mm. So you don't even bother to put your ATM to try to withdraw to the extent of the machine trying to debit you. Mm. So we need to upgrade our technology. We need to upgrade our, our equipment. That's why we keep mm. having these issues. And the onus of the, lies on the CBN to instruct these banks, these commercial banks, and even other smaller banks to ensure that their system is up to date. You don't mm. keep using use uh, yeah, I mean, uh, out of date equipment. That's why mm -hmm. the customers will continue to suffer. Okay, so where do we draw the line um, with um, malicious attacks on personalities or maybe uh, CEOs or MDs of bank to the operations, you know, because a whole lot of things are happening now for for the sake of, um, you know, subjudice. Uh, there's a particular case in court. Now, I don't want to start mentioning brands and yeah. names, you yeah. know, but the issue right now is that um, a school of thought believes uh, that um, is like um, a, a vendetta on the on that particular bank because um, they just announced them um, a profit of about um, one trillion naira, which is like um, a hallmark in the banking sector. And uh, 
Right. I, uh, when they did that, it, it came at a time where there's um, online bloggers and all where, you know, now tarnishing um, it, um, the the personality of um, of the bank's uh, CEO. Uh, CEO. So just yeah. to discredit um, the bank. You know, over time, we've seen things like this happen where messages are just passed across, especially for uh, other payment service providers. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, they're like... Uh, I don't want to mention there's a popular one that's always in the news all the time being sent to people to go and withdraw their money. If you have money in this bank, go. This bank uh, is is having issues and all that. So where do we we draw? Where do we draw the line? You know of um, allegations and substanti substantiating all of these issues with, with mere fact and not just maligning names and discrediting banks. So it's very. Yeah, I'm going to say, um, and I'm going to be crystal clear. It's very mm. impossible to. Uh, to regulate or to really take away such incidents from yeah. happening in a space like social media that is um, free for all. Yeah. But as much as possible, that is not a good um, uh, character in, uh, from the part of social media users. But again, as bank, as bank owners, if we do the right thing, a lot of times, even when people come on social media to slander you, yeah. Even some people will still come on that same platform to say, nope, this is, this is not correct, this is not right. True. Because they have evidences to show that whoever is trying to slander them is trying to just trying to make a false allegation. But again, social media is a free-for-all space. People come on to do all sorts. Yes, and, and I'm not totally ruling out cases of even competitors that will hide under, the, under, different, under different names and just... Yeah pass wrong messages just to get customers to come to their own, you know, bank and, mm. you know, discredit another bank is very possible. Mm. And this, again, does not only happen in Nigeria. So, mm. again, I, I just think that such banks needs to be more focused and just make sure that you do the right thing. When you do the right thing, as people are coming to discredit you, some people will be on that same app, on that same space, you know, singing praises of you. That's mm. the way to go. But, I mean, I mean, that's why you've seen what is happening in social media these days when people come on make content and after a few days or few um, it's weeks, forgotten. they have been sued to court. So, mm. so I mean that's the okay. legal that's the legal thing to do anyway. But True. again, but my, my, my point is how many people, how many court cases do we want to keep having? Mm. How many so, so and how far do we see the result of such such court cases? So you know, but at the end of the day I just feel that we as customers, I mean who uses this bank also, if we get value for the monies or the services or the or the you know transactions that we do. Mm. I don't think that such people would really come online to you know discredit people. But again, there are people who are mischievous. So no matter how good you are or, or how best you put you you know you put up best practices, they will still come and say negative. That, that's life. Mm. That's life. So no, no matter how perfect you are, the human being, some people will just be somewhere eating on you. So it's not you cannot really you know stop it. But I think that we we need, we need to put out the word to Nigerians. Okay. So these are these are bank CEOs. These are bank owners. They've invested oh. money, and whether you like it or not, they are also helping us. To make sure that we have a safe place to yes. keep our monies. Yes, and to even do businesses. To do businesses, yes. Okay, but then uh, another another question that comes to mind is um, regulation itself. You know, can all of these infractions, all of these issues, uh, just go and um, the CBN would not really have, um, you know, wind of all of these issues because there have been reports of. Um, you know, um, banks are doing a very, trying to make um, a quick money from customers and deposits and all of that. And where some even banks, uh, top management level or uh, senior management level, they do some of these transactions. You know, in the in the wake of trying to make some quick money, quick not money. just for the bank but for themselves. You know, so does all of this happen? And the CBN or even um, the the senior management level would not know about them. So the CBN is not the CBN is not good because they're supposed to do they're supposed to, because no I know because yes. they're supposed to send there are some reports yeah. you know that are being sent to the CBN for instance uh, if uh, you are a, a, a customer and um, you have some levels of deposit and you 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 go about a particular need it has to be flagged you know yeah. by the CBN sometimes I know some under Handed jobs that have been done in the bank and most of the times um, you know this these um, um, accounts are not even flagged. Yeah, so it's, it's totally difficult to monitor or to keep track of transactions or, you know, or cases of fraud or corruption in the banking sector 100%. Mm. But as much as possible, the banking sector, as much as possible, try to see how 
they could mitigate against such things largely. Mm. But it's totally difficult to cover it 100%. Every system in every system of the world, every banking system of the world has people break into, people find a way to cheat the system. Mm. In the UK, in America, everywhere, they find a way to cheat the system. But as much as possible, it is very possible for the CBN and even the financial institutions to try and reduce the, the level of, uh, you know, the fraud and, you know, corruption and everything that goes on within the banking space. Mm. So, uh, again, Nigeria is not the only country that has small, small lapses in our banking sector. Mm. If you go to the Amer America, for example, we have people who find a way to, there was a case of a particular guy in, in, in America that, 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 that find a way to be withdrawing, I think, one dollars from all their bank accounts in America. Mm. And I think it was caught at a particular time. It was withdrawing one dollar from all bank accounts. Mm. And it was caught. So they are not saying that. And in those countries, they allow you to. Sometimes they, they, when they see that you're trying to cheat the system, sometimes they even allow you to do it. But they want to catch you red-handed. Mm. So you have not committed a crime yet until you do it. They want to catch you red-handed. So, so, so when they catch you, you're now able to explain to them how you were able to break into the system. Mm. So they can now also upgrade their own technology too. So mm. such things are prevented. So, so, that's why, that's why, so that's why we need to also take a cue from those kind of countries. We must always upgrade our system. Technology moves on. Technology is evolving every other time. Okay. So uh, even uh, last time on this show, we talked about cases where even the CBN is trying to have a, a an app to device mm. to to detect fraudulent transactions yeah. on mobile apps mm. from you know from the mobile uh, money operators and all that. So these yeah. are these are ways that we can always okay. improve. Okay. So last word on this as we go on the show right now. So let's talk about depositors' confidence right now in all yes. of this. The CBN has come out with a statement saying that um, their their phones are secure. Uh, the C uh, CIBN and the um, bank CEOs are actually warning against and um, social media attacks. But in all of this, um, Nigerians are still worried. You know, over time they they are being warned in about not putting too much money in some of these um, uh, payment services and providers. And uh, yeah. right now, uh, there are talks of, uh, you know, your monies are not secure, withdraw your money. So how do they strike a balance as we round off? What's your advice? So again, I, I, I do not blame Nigerians that are, that are in the panic mode right now, because again, we've seen what happened to Heritage Bank a few months ago. People had confidence, people believed that their money was safe, but the bank, the license was withdrawn. Mm. So, I mean, so it just, continues to lie on CBN or the, these, these uh, bank institutions mm. to continue to show some level of confidence and to continue to show some level of, give these people some level of safety net to say, yes, your monies are secured. All right. but again, but with NDIC, I think mm. that the monies are secured one, one way or the other because okay. NDIC will definitely find a way to refund mm. the depositors the all might their money. Wife, but yes, you get your might take a while, but you get your money back. All right. Really so, thank you so much, uh, Mustafa. We'll just uh, rest the anchor on thank that so uh, because there's a whole lot to talk when we talk about um, the banking system. Mustafa Iwinla is a public affairs analyst, and we have been discussing that the financial services uh, sector and all of the issues that have happened in the past um, few days. Many thanks once again for thank your you time. Thank you. All right. And that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there. Bye for now. <laughs>